everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our long-running series, The Unported Playlist, where I take a look at some of my favorite unported arcade games of all time, and we're currently going through five games that I'm calling Unported Hall of Fame. Some of the earliest videos I did in the Life of Unported Playlist brought back around because I want to talk about them again and I want more people to know they exist. And today we're taking a look at Planet Harriers from Sega running on the Sega Hikaru board. Not only is this game still not ported, but emulation of Hikaru has not moved an inch since I originally did the video almost three years ago, and that is absolutely heartbreaking. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But let's jump right into Planet Harriers, or as much as I can possibly show you of it, because I will tell you right now, if you want to emulate this game, get prepared for pure frustration, because it is going to freeze on you time and time again. I have never seen the ending of this game under emulation. I've only played it once in real life, about 17 years ago when I was in Los Angeles for work. I have never seen a cabinet for it since, and that is the one and only time I've played through the entire game, which is an absolute travesty because this is part of the Space Harriers franchise from Sega and it has never been ported nor have any of the other games on the Sega Karu platform and the problem is the board is fragile as all hell but I will get into that in a little bit let's talk more about the game than Sega disappointing us one more time it's just amazing. It is exactly like we'd expect Space Harriers to play, but it is a completely different premise. We're not in any sort of ship right now. We are just flying through this environment with a jetpack on our back, and you have four selectable characters to shoot everything in front of you. Now, the Hikaru is based on the Dreamcast and Naomi, but it has a lot of different onboard hardware. This was the high end of what Dreamcast spec hardware could do with a lot of improvements, and there was only a handful of games released on it because it was quite expensive. But the simple fact is, this is something that you can only play on original hardware or via emulation, and via emulation you're really not going to get to play much of it. But from a historical and video game preservation standpoint, it is still so important to talk about, and I'm very surprised in the intervening years since I first did this video, no one has looked at Hikaru and tried to do an improvement on the emulation. You will see once you get about halfway through this stage, you're going to get to the star shop here, and we've been collecting gold the entire time. You need to upgrade your character basically every level because this game is going to get very hard very quickly and the more upgrades you buy, the easier of a time you're going to have. But you want to manage that money because maybe there's a bigger upgrade coming in between levels that you don't want to overspend for right now. But once you get back out of that star shop and you go right back into the game, I will say this looks absolutely spectacular. Hikaru was impressive hardware. This to me looks like something that the Xbox or the GameCube would have been doing and had their been a Dreamcast 2, maybe it would have been something like a cut down Hikaru spec because this was a very big, very intense board, and that is what did it in in the first place. Now, three, count it three times, I have tried to acquire Sega Hikaru hardware once locally in Chicago. Last time I mentioned it, I had never been able to get one around the area. The first two times, the person that was selling it, two different people actually, promised me they knew how to ship them. They did not. They did a terrible job, and all of the ball grid array chips just flew clean off the board. And that is because Sega made an incredible game that looks visually stunning and has all the gameplay you'd want out of a Harrier-style game. But they managed to screw up the hardware design by not tinning one side of the chip. There might be solder on the chip, but they didn't tin the pads on the board, and that means there's a weak mechanical connection, and you so much as bump it, and the chips just fall clean off the board, killing it unless you know how to reball them. Now I tried to buy one in Chicago from a local person out in the suburbs. They said they had one. When they put it away, it was working. I said, great, name your price, I'll drive out, I'll transport it safely, and we will be good. That person got it out of the closet, and they dropped it on the floor, and the chips fell off. I kid you not, that is a true story. The person felt terrible, they ruined the board, and it never worked again. But hey, outside of that big disappointment, I will say, the soundtrack is quite good. So go ahead and listen for 45 seconds and I'm going to go cry in the corner. You're approaching the boss. Camera. 
Awesome soundtrack, awesome sound effects, but I swear I'm never going to actually get a board for this game. And it's kind of funny, and there are those things that you just constantly chase. But it is such a disappointment, just from a preservation standpoint, that so many of Sega's arcade games have never been ported home, and there are a few of them that just don't emulate, because it isn't just Planet Harriers. Brave Firefighters, another game I would love to have in my collection, is just something where the cabinets basically become extinct, and it does not emulate very well whatsoever, because you'll see right here, right in the stage two, it just froze. The game will just randomly freeze on you and you never know when it's going to happen. Sometimes it pulls up an error that was unable to draw a texture, sometimes no error whatsoever. But if you just restart and you get lucky, maybe you'll get a little bit further in the game. But be prepared to be frustrated because playing it from start to finish isn't just going to be a thing you can do. But when it is working and it is playing, it is spectacular. Flying around through these trees, watching those leaves fall in real time, while everything 3D on the screen renders in real time, it just looks amazing. This is one of those holy grail games for me, and it's not because I can't find it, it's just because I can't find it locally, and even when I do, somebody drops it on the floor. Maybe it's just a cursed game, maybe it's not meant to be, and everyone has those games. Leave me a comment down below and tell me the game that you really want to play again, but you just can't manage to do it for one reason or another. Because I'm going to keep hunting this game. One day I will have a Planet Harry's because I want to see the ending and I want to show it to you on real hardware. Because all of this is just so much fun. The shooting mechanics, the lock on it has everything you want out of a flying shooting game from Sega. And I love being able to drop down onto the ground and run around on the forest floor. And you will see compared to Dreamcast Naomi there is some more texture filtering going on as well. Hakaru had a lot of different filters and shaders on board things that weren't available to the rest of the hardware. And it's just so unfortunate they got that hardware design so bad that the board will basically suicide itself if you so much as bump it the wrong way. And you will see that the emulation, when it is working, does work relatively well. There's definitely going to be some texture and effects issues here and there, but the fact that Hakaru even works in the first place is not anything to complain about. And you will see I take my first death. This game is relatively fair, and that's the unfortunate part. You could probably put $5 worth of coins in and see the ending if you can find a cabinet. But if you do know where there is a cabinet, leave me a comment down below, because I would be painfully curious if this still exists in the U.S. somewhere, because I have not seen one in forever, and every time I'm in a different city, I look up at least one arcade and I walk into it just to see what they have on the floor. But again, I love the soundtrack of this game. I love the enemy designs. These rolling kind of pill bugs here just look so fun. But go ahead and listen for like 30 more seconds of the soundtrack, and I'll come back and talk more about the history of the game, why I want to play it so badly, and why Hikaru is the best board Sega ever made that also is the worst board they ever made. But enjoy. Again, it's just such a great soundtrack and such a fun game to watch in motion. That is why I want it in my original hardware collection. Now, maybe you played a Hikaru game and you didn't realize it, because there are six games available for the board, and a couple of them still do exist from place to place. NASCAR Arcade, probably the most popular game I would say on the Hikaru. I do know of a few cabinets for that that still exist out in the wild. The other one being Star Wars Racer Arcade, another one you're probably going to see. The other four games, if you find a cabinet, you are going to be very surprised, and I 100% suggest you put some credits in and play. That's going to be Brave Firefighters, the game you're watching right here, Planet Harriers, Air Tricks, and a sequel to Virtual On that never got a release in the US, so you're going to have to be in Japan if you want to find that one. But that technically got a port to the Xbox 360, but it is different enough that it doesn't feel quite like the arcade. But moving on to the second boss, you're going to see that the emulation will struggle here and there. There are just some effects on the Hikaru graphic side of the silicon that are not working in emulation. And again, that's not a knock on this at all. The fact that it even exists via emulation in Demule is in of itself an accomplishment. I just wish that somebody would pick it up and finish it. And I get that this is not an open source emulator, so honestly it's pretty hard for anyone to come around and actually finish it. And because there's only six games on the board, it's probably not many people's priority to try to get this running. 
which is such a shame because from a preservation standpoint alone, everyone should be able to play a game like this. And from a rarity of the hardware standpoint and the fact that the hardware likes to break constantly, there's going to be a point in time in which there's barely any Sega Hikaru boards left in the wild. And that means a game like Planet Harriers is at risk of actually becoming extinct unless emulation gets better or somebody finds a warehouse full of unused Hikarus, and only one of those is probably possible. But moving on to stage 3, I call it the heartbreak stage because 99 out of the 100 times I try to play it, the game's going to freeze. And I only use that as a figure of speech, I have not tried it 100 times because I would lose my mind. But I wanted to talk about Planet Harriers again because damn it, it's an amazing game and it's one that's almost impossible to play. Sure to that, I'll see you guys next time, the game just froze. Bye bye.